Welcome back to Beer VTV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're gonna to give our final conclusion on the Sony A7R5 camera. You may have watched our video, our first impressions about it, so we've had a chance to test the camera, play with it a lot, now we wanna talk about our findings overall and just finalize our, our review of this camera. Now today you've got me indoors in front of this beautiful yellow paper, that's because it's Easter. No, it's not. It's because it's polar vortex outside and it's freezing cold. And so, yes, we are indoors again. I'm sorry for that. Luckily, we have had time to shoot sample galleries. We've done video. In fact, Jordan is shooting me on the Sony a7R5 right now as well. So we've got lots of conclusions for stills and video to talk about. So I really enjoyed my time shooting the Sony a7R5. Honestly, just the experience was more enjoyable for me than I normally have with Sony cameras. And so I actually did call it my favorite camera that I used in 2022. And there's a lot of stiff competition there, but really just comes down to, they added a lot of good in here. I mean, I really like the updated EVF. Uh, the IBIS has been updated and it's very effective. The cameras aren't sexy, but the A7R5 does handle well. The controls are usable. I like the fact that I can customize the autofocus color of the box, which is a big pet peeve for me. The fully articulating LCD screen is fully to the nth degree articulating with the hinge as well as the articulation. I mean, really they threw a lot of stuff at it and a lot of it really does land well. But most importantly, with the excellent autofocus and all these features, using the camera, it's just kind of effortless. It's enjoyable, it's easy to use, and you get great results. Now, a lot of people out there are saying, well, hey, why not get a Sony a7R4? It's the same sensor, you know, I mean, you're gonna get a good deal. And actually, we recommended that as well. You do save a bit of money, and it is an excellent sensor. I still think that the other improvements make the a7R5 an absolutely worthy upgrade, but, we wanted to talk about image quality specifically because we assumed when we did our first impressions video, we've got a similar sensor. It's gonna be the same kind of image quality. We've since done the lab testing. The fact is, yes, it is actually basically, for all intents and purposes, identical image quality to the a7R4. You're getting that excellent 60 megapixel resolution, very expansive dynamic range. Noise performance is good. Maybe not as good as some other sensors out there, but overall, this is a fantastic picture taker. Now, the similarities to the a7R4 sensor also unfortunately mean that we have basically some of the slowest readout speeds you'll find in a contemporary full frame sensor, which means your electronic shutter performance is rough. You get those hard diagonals, unless you wanna be an optimist and just make art out of it. I mean, if you shoot mechanical shutter like I do a lot, it's not a problem. But what if you wanna do things like the multi-shot mode, which are electronic shutter only? Well, then you really do have to consider those situations. Now, while we're on the topic of that multi-shot mode, I do love the fact they've now added that motion uh, correction capability. That's very important. We didn't have it before. and if you were even a little bit off in your shots or a little bit of movement or things moving through the frame, it just looked horrible. Now that actually does effectively work to realign the images and to freeze subjects that are in motion. Unfortunately, yes, you still have to do it through their edge software. Now, as much as I love the image quality on this camera, I do still have an issue with it. It's sort of in a roundabout way, not really the quality, but this stuff right here, dust. It is still an issue on Sony bodies. It always has been. And you know, I thought here, Sony says they have this new ultrasonic sensor cleaning system that they've updated. I still had dust problems on the sensor. I didn't really notice it to be that big an improvement. But one thing that I did find to be nice is that you can now set the camera so the shutter closes when you take lenses off. And that's a really nice feature that helps. But I was still getting dust on my sensor. And especially in a camera with a high resolution sensor, which you'll often use for architecture, landscapes, stop down, you're gonna notice it. So I do wish that was improved, but Again, you can get rid of it in post. So next I wanna talk about autofocus. And of course our impressions from our first video were that it was excellent, but we were shooting mostly stationary stuff. The insect thing still does impress me, but we wanted to test it for more sports and action kind of photography. Now a lot of people are saying, oh, you don't get a Sony a7R5 for sports and action. But frankly, the fact that I can shoot 10 frames mechanical shutter uh, with an excellent buffer, and if I want to go lossless compress, that still drops to seven, that's not terrible. No, it's not a sports camera, but I think it could absolutely handle some fast action sports situations and certainly street photography. So anyways, Jordan did some soccer shooting. I did some volleyball shooting. We really want to test out and see how it was changed. And this is what we found. So first off, Sony's have always done a good job with the real-time tracking. You know, I always specifically like to set smaller points. Then the onus is on me to start the tracking on a subject that I specifically want. And then I found it to be quite sticky. But if it lost face or eyes, it would go to real-time tracking. And sometimes it would drift to other subjects and then track them very well. But it wasn't the subject that you wanted, a quick touch or something or a readjustment to get it going again. But what we now found here with this new human recognition system is that if it loses their face, 
face or eye, it will then just intelligently stay on the body and the torso of that original subject. And what Jordan and I both found in our conclusions was, even with other similar looking players around and lots of busy situations, the camera just did a really good job of staying on the subject that you originally intended. So it's improving on a system that was already very trustworthy, very accurate, and very reliable. And I just find that your hit rate, especially with our running test, was excellent. Now with sports, volleyball, soccer, with lots of subjects, also accurate. I think this actually is a very capable action camera. So when we talk about cameras that compete with the A7R5, I mean, you got the Nikon Z7 II, which is a great picture taker, but you know, doesn't have the resolution, doesn't quite have the autofocusing capabilities. The Canon EOS R5, which I love, would absolutely be a good choice. I love the handling on that camera, I like the images out of that camera, but I now feel like the A7R5 does edge it out in the technology range. Really, it competes against other Sony cameras. The A7R4, that might be a worthwhile way to go to save some money if you don't need these updated features, or the A1, which is vastly more expensive, but absolutely is a very capable sports and action shooter as well. But overall, it is still my favorite Sony camera, really because I enjoy the experience, but also because I'm looking at it only for photos. When it comes to video, that's another story. So let's go to Jordan and find out his final conclusions. All right, it's Jordan to talk about the video capabilities of the A7R5. Uh, Chris, what mode are you shooting I at here? Uh, so right now we're just in 4K 24, full width of the sensor. Oh, okay, so if you're recording in that, it is subsampled video. So I wouldn't generally recommend using the full width 4K. It's gonna be less detailed, noisier, and high ISO. Okay, I'll change it, hang on. Okay, what are we on now? Okay, so I switched over to 8K, because that's oh. like four more Ks, but there's a really big crop, so I've had to pull the tripod Yeah, I mean, that's back. one of the problems. It is cropped when you jump over to 8K. And on top of that, like, this is atrocious rolling shutter performance once you get into that. I don't, is there another mode you can use? I don't know, something's wrong with your arm. It's all weird. Okay, yeah, let me switch over to something else here. Okay, what are we now? I mean, we're running out of choices, so I've gone back down to 4K24, but I turned on the Super 35 crop. That should help, but then I had to get back even further again. Yeah, I mean, that's the nice thing is the Super 35 mode. It is oversampled, so we're going to get, like, more detailed video out of it. But, uh, again, like, the rolling shutter on this is really dramatic, worse than I would expect. I thought it would be similar to like the 26 megapixel Fujifilm sensors, but it is actually quite a bit worse. And this is my main problem with this camera for video is there's basically no ideal record mode. You're always gonna have to choose between very noticeable rolling shutter or some sort of subsampled mode with a lot less detail. And it's really frustrating because there's so many excellent features for video shooters on this camera wrapped around a sensor that's not ideal for video capture, like the new LCD implementation where you've got like a tilt combined with a fully articulating screen. I loved it before in our previous episode, but now having used it out in the field with gloves, this design I'd even put ahead of the Panasonic. It's just very easy to pull the LCD back and adjust it, even when you've got something on your hands. And the electronic viewfinder is just fantastic for checking focus on this camera. And I wasn't really sure what kind of benefits that new AI processing unit was going to bring to the video autofocus performance, but having shot a couple of episodes with it now, just using the tap to track, it is incredibly sticky. I actually haven't seen it wander off of Chris any time when we were shooting talking head interviews. Out in the field, this is the best video autofocus performance that I've seen from any camera, but it's not perfect. I really wish they could learn from Nikon's implementation in the Z9 of their tracking interface for video, where you could use the electronic viewfinder, use the AF joystick, use the AF on button to initiate tracking in video. Sony, you still have to tap on the LCD, which means taking your eye away from the electronic viewfinder, if that's how you're framing up your shot, or tapping the screen and then putting your eye up to the camera, potentially shaking it. It seems like a simple thing to implement, and other than that, this Sony video performance is awesome. Now, Sony is keeping all of their like 10-bit recording, all the different codecs that we've seen on the other cameras, and they've got a lot of really nice new features like the breathing compensation, the focus map. These are things that I love working with. But the simple truth is they're all going to be held back by the fact that this sensor is not ideal for video. Every one of the record modes that you'll choose is a compromise in some way. So serious video enthusiasts, this camera is not really for you. But if you do more casual video work alongside of primarily using a photo camera, then this is certainly going to fulfill those needs for you. And I hate to like be a bummer at the end of the video talking about the video things because this is an exceptional photo camera and we shouldn't lose sight of that. But, you know, I got to throw my two cents in there and I'm wrapping this up. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm pointing down, but we're not there yet. Uh, that's for 
Twitter and Instagram. That's what that's for when I point down. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all again with another episode of DP Review TV, hopefully in the glorious outdoors.